Hi, welcome to Turabian Bootcamp. My name is Steve Jameson, Associate Librarian for Public Services. In this workshop, uh, we're going to review the fundamentals of citing in Turabian style, uh, which is very important for uh, your papers. So we're going to begin uh, with just this basic question, well, why do we cite in the first place? Well, first of all, uh, we want to give credit where credit is due. So whether you're using a direct quotation, a paraphrase, or a summary in your paper or project, uh, you need to give credit whenever you use material from someone else. Not giving credit is plagiarism, a serious uh, offense uh, that the uh, seminary takes seriously. So that's uh, one very important reason to cite your sources, to give credit. But more than that, uh, we use citations so that the reader, uh, your professor or whoever may be reading it, can verify your work. So they can go back to the sources that you used uh, to make sure that you uh, quoted the source properly, uh, you quoted it uh, in the spirit of the original uh, work, uh, and it's also to aid the reader in their own research. Uh, you know, some of our dissertation or thesis writers, uh, those will be out there for others to read and they may be assisting other students like yourself in your research and following those citations can be a useful way to find other sources for your research. So that's another reason why we include citations. So these uh, reasons bring us to kind of these fundamental principles of citation. So a citation must precisely identify the original source and a citation must provide enough information for the reader to track down that original source. Uh, both that gives the credit that where credit is due, and then it helps your reader check up on your work and do their own research. Now there's a lot of details that are left open uh, with those fundamental principles, and so that's where the style manuals come in. They standardize uh, what is required to achieve those fundamental principles of citation, what information is required to achieve those goals. And Covenant uses and supports Turabian and APA style. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about Turabian. So uh, Turabian what or who? Well, this is Turabian, uh, a manual for writers of research papers, theses, and dissertations. Uh, this was originally written by Kate L. Turabian, who was a, the graduate school dissertation secretary and a publication editor at the University of Chicago. And she produced, uh, she started off producing simplified and adapted Chicago style guides uh, within the context of writing dissertations, theses, and research papers. And that eventually grew into this. So this is an adaptation of the Chicago manual of style, which is used in a broader array of contexts. Now, this is a pretty big book, uh, lots of details, so we kind of boil it down for you and have a, our own guide to Turabian uh, on our website, covenantseminary.edu slash library slash Turabian. And we'll be looking at that uh, as we do some examples to, today. Uh, but let's start off with some basic uh, fundamentals, uh, starting with books. So when you're citing a book, uh, this is almost always the information that you will need, at the very least. Uh, I say almost because you know sometimes uh, one or more of these pieces of information will not be available, and then you can omit it. But as long as this information is given, then you will definitely want to note that down to include in your citation. So you need the author and the title, of course, but also the place of publication, the publisher, and the date. Those are the most important pieces of information to precisely identify your source. Uh, but when applicable, you'll also want to note down this information to include. So if there's an editor or a translator, now um, editor, we're particularly interested in the editor for that particular work. Sometimes if a work is published as part of a series, there may be a series editor and that's, that editor is less important in terms of citation. Uh, but if there's an editor of the particular book in the series, you definitely want to note that. Uh, edition, as long if it's an edition other than the first, the uh, second edition, third edition, revised edition, we'll need to note that down. Uh, series title. So again, if it is in a series, we want to know the title of that series. It's a multi-volume work, so one discrete 
work that has been broken up into multiple volumes, uh, you'll want to note the number of volumes uh, that encompasses that work. And then if you consult a book online or electronically, uh, you'll need one of uh, URL if it's something that's publicly available on the internet, uh, the database name if it's something you found in, for example, our ebook database, or ebook format, for example, you know, Kindle if it's something you bought on Amazon. So here's a basic example. So let's start with a footnote. So we start with the author. And we just put the author's name exactly as given in the work. And then we add on the title. And we're going to put the title in quotation marks. And we're also going to put the title in title or headline case. So all major words so you are capitalized at the beginning. Uh, you don't capitalize things like prepositions, conjunctions, and that sort of thing. It doesn't necessarily matter how long the word is. It's just the part of speech that it is uh, terms it. So like uh, in this case, of does not get capitalized. Uh, through would not get capitalized, even though that's a much longer word. Um, <clears throat> but all the other words get capitalized. And then we put in the... Uh, location of the publisher. So this book uh, was uh, published in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we're always going to use standard postal abbreviations for uh, the place of publication, so MI for Michigan. And then the name of the publisher. And then lastly, the date. And actually, lastly, the, uh, for the footnote, uh, the page number that you're actually citing. So there's your footnote. Author, title, place of publication, publisher, date. All those uh, required elements. When we get to the uh, bibliography, it's going to look a little bit different. Same information. It's just formatted a little differently. Uh, for one, you note that the author... See here, the name has been inverted. So instead of first name, middle name, last name, it goes last name, first name, middle name. So that's an inverted name. Uh, then the other thing to note is that whereas the footnote tends to use commas and parentheses to separate the different pieces of information in the bibliography, that uses periods. So comma, in the footnote, period, in the bibliography. And then you always end with a period. <coughs> now let's look at an example uh, for articles, so journal articles, uh, things in periodicals, that sort of thing. So again, here's the information that you will always need as long as that information is given. Author, article title, journal title, volume and issue number, the date that the journal issue was published, and the starting and ending pages for the article. And then when applicable, if you're viewing it online electronically, a URL for something, uh, again, publicly available on the internet, or a database name if it's something in one of the library subscription databases. So let's look at an example of that. So we start off with the author, and then we add the article title, and we put that in quotation marks. And again, the title goes into title case or headline case inside those quotation marks. Then we do the journal title, and that goes in italics. So anytime there's kind of a, uh, a sort of a, a level of something that is a part of something else, the part goes in quotation marks, and the overall larger unit goes in uh, italics. So article title, quotation marks, periodical, journal title, and italics. All right after that journal title, we're going to put in the issue information. So that's volume 125, number one. So you don't include any abbreviation for volume. You just put the volume number right after the journal title. And then you put a comma and then the abbreviation NO for number uh, to in front of the issue number. 
Now, if you have something that is only numbered in volumes, then you just leave, then you don't put an issue number on there. So it'd just be you know, expository times 125, if that were the case. Uh, some things are, don't, aren't broken into volumes and they're just numbered sequentially in issue numbers. In that case, you would just omit the volume number and just have the title, comma, the abbreviation NO for number, and then the issue number. And then in parentheses, you put the date, and this is the date as displayed on uh, the journal itself. Uh, so it could be a, just a year. It could be a season like fall or spring, summer. It could be, in this case, a month, October. It could be a particular date. It could be October 7th, 2013. And then we add the page number that we're citing, since this is the footnote. And if this was something we looked at, oh, and, um, and this is an idiosyncrasy of citing journals. Instead of using a comma before the page number, you use a colon. So that's just very unique. You only see that uh, when you're citing uh, journals. So just remember that if you have a journal, put a colon before the page number that you're citing. And then if you saw this online, you add the URL that's provided. Uh, usually the journal will provide a um, standard uh, permanent URL or a URL based on the digital object identifier, the DOI. And then if, uh, so that's, you know, there's some little piece here that indicates uh, the journal, a slash, and then, uh, the article within that journal. You can take that and just add it after this address here, https colon slash slash doi.org slash put in that digital object identifier and you have a functional permanent URL for that item. And then this is what it looks like in the bibliography. Again, we invert the author name, so last name, then first name in the bibliography. <coughs> But otherwise, most of the information looks the same. And again, where in the footnote you have commas, in the bibliography you will have periods. And the other thing to note there um, is that you have to include the full page range for the entire article in the bibliography. So this article starts on page 3 and ends on page 12. And so that's how you uh, do books and articles. And so let's talk about some bibliography basics um, as you put your bibliography together. So one, you'll be sorting your bibliography entries alphabetically by the last name of the first author or the title if it's anonymous. So this is one of the reasons why author names in the bibliography are inverted. Uh, so their last name first, it's because you're sorting by last name first. And if you're, uh, citing a work by multiple authors, you only invert the name of the first author given. So all the other authors will be in normal first name, last name order. It's just the first author gets inverted for the sorting. Each entry should have a half inch hanging indent. So that means the first line of each entry is flush with the left margin and any subsequent lines are indented half an inch. So it's kind of a, inversion of what you would normally expect for a paragraph. And then entries should be single spaced internally within themselves, but put a blank line of space between each entry. <clears throat> and then as already mentioned, titles go in title case. And also be sure to use the standard postal abbreviation. So Illinois should be just capital I, capital L, not ILL, -L, which is an abbreviation you'll often see in the library catalog. So let's practice. So let's go over to the library homepage, www.covenantseminary.edu slash library. And if I scroll down the page here, Scroll down to the featured guides. First one right there is our Turabian citation guide. So let me open that in a new tab here in the background step so that we can work with that. And this goes, so there's bibliography basics. And then 
we break it down by type of item, articles, books, websites, audio and video, lectures and presentations, and then other citation situations. And we're gonna start off with a book so we can jump down to the book section. <clears throat> and you give us the basic book form and then go into all different cases, single author, multiple author, what do you do with editors or translators, et cetera. So you can find you know, what is the uh, you know, situation that you're dealing with and it'll give you some guidance and some real life examples from things that really exist in the Covenant Library. So it collapse that. So let me go back to the library homepage and scroll up a bit here. And I'm gonna start off by finding an ebook. So I'm gonna click on our ebooks search there. Um, actually, maybe go in through a different way since I'm off campus tonight. <coughs> so I'm gonna pull up um, Greg Keener's commentary on the Gospel of John. I'll have to log in eventually. So there we go. It's that resource. Let me go into that. Pop this over here for a second. So we're bringing up the book and I'm going to go to the detailed record. Now in a lot of our databases, you'll see something like this, where you have a, a citation function over here on the side. I can click that and the database will take the information from the record and try and put it into a number of different uh, citation formats. So I'm going to scroll down here. Here's Chicago Turabian author date. So this would be a inline in-text citation, uh, which is not what we use. We use the uh, Chicago Turabian uh, footnote bibliography style. Um, so that's here, Chicago Turabian humanities. So this is the format for when you're doing uh, footnotes with a bibliography. And this is going to get me parted away there. You can never fully trust uh, these citations because there's always uh, something a little off about them. But let's take that over to my Word document here. Gives me something to start with. So I'm going to bring that in. Got some weird formatting on there. So I'm going to choose here to match my destination formatting so it matches the fonts and styles of my, uh, my paper. <coughs> And so we uh, expect from um, you know the Turabian Citation Guide. So we can go down here and find uh, ebook and see what we have here. So we're going to you know have author title. Here's bibliography. Author title, place of publication, publisher date, and then the name of the database where I found that. Go ahead and copy that right now since that's the database that I'm working in here. So we come in here, we see, okay, we got the author, it's inverted, that's good. Title, title case, it's a little weird that we have this uh, space before that colon, so we wanna get rid of that. That's kind of a catalog convention to do it that way. Grand Rapids, oh, this is not a postal abbreviation, so let's fix that. MI for Michigan, Baker Academic, 2012, and then we will paste in that database name and again match the styles of my paper. And I've got my uh, first bibliography entry there. Now we need to do some styling on this because uh, you know this wraps to a separate line, so we need to do that hanging indent. You can go up here to uh, you know format paragraph and wherever you can wherever that is in your word processor. And here's the indent section. I can choose special hanging indent half an inch. And that gets me my indent. 
Now the other thing I want to set up is the spacing. So this is a single space, but I need a space between each bibliography entry. So I'm going to go back up here to paragraph formatting and here's spacing so I can put after each entry put 12 points of space since I'm using a 12 point font that'll give me a full line of space after each entry and then I'm ready to go with my next citation. Okay so let me close out of that and let me do a print book this time. So we're going to do uh, author Colin Cruz and we want the Tyndale commentary on John, the Gospel of John. if I spell gospel correctly. And what else am I missing? Oh, I think it's gospel according to John. There we go. <clears throat> so we'll do that one there. Okay. So our catalog doesn't have a, you know, build a citation feature, so we're going to have to do this manually. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab the, uh, that line there. That'll give me the author and the title. Paste that in. Again, let's, uh, let's just keep only the text. And we'll move the author up front. And we need to invert the author name. So we'll take out the, uh, move the last name to the front, an extra period. Now again, we have this uh, space before the colon. So let's take that out. And we need to get this into title case. <coughs> and there's some, uh, different websites where you can do that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, one is uh, titlecase.com. I'm going to do their title case converter. So I can paste in my title there, click convert, and down here, it's capitalized everything uh, for me. So I'll go back, replace that. And then I need to put that in italics because it's a book title. Okay, so now we have a So we're dealing with a commentary, and this one is in a series. The other one was not in a series. This one's in the Tyndale New Testament commentary series. So let's go to our Turabian guide and look up book in a series. And it shows you, okay, so here's a commentary example here. So we get the author, the title, and then the series title, and that's not italicized, not in quotation marks, that's just in standard text, and then onto the facts of publication. That's easy, so let's just grab the we'll just grab the series title here. Copy that and paste that into my document. And capitalize that. And then we need the facts of publication. So place publisher and date. So here again, fix that state abbreviation. 
trim that down date and we're all set there. So there's print book in a series commentary. So that's a good one. We'll be, we'll do a lot of those. Now let's do a article, a journal article. Let's go back to the library homepage. I'll go in here to our journal articles databases, and we'll go into the ATLA religion database, and we're gonna do a search for the wine of Cana. So I'll just grab this first one here. So Greek Orthodox Theological Review. So again, database gives us a cite this item feature to at least get us started. So scroll down to Chicago Travian Humanities. And again, so uh, the database is trying to give me a URL. And so that's fine, sort of, uh, that may work. Uh, you know, it's a covenant URL uh, at web address. So, you know, for like your professor uh, or classmate, that would work fine. But if anyone outside of covenant uh, were reading your work, uh, that would not do them any good. So that's why we prefer to use the database name for uh, citing things that you find in our databases. So I'm just going to leave that URL off, URL off and just copy that main thing and then we'll add the database name in at the end. So paste that in. Match our destination formatting. And we check our uh, Turabian guide. So I'm going to scroll up here to articles and we're doing a e-journal article here. We found it in the database. It gives you examples of that using different kinds of URLs. You know, it talks about you know, using digital object identifiers, DOIs, and here you know, something you found in the library database. So it looks pretty much just like a standard uh, you know, journal article with just the database name tacked on at the end. So we have author name, article title, title case, very good, journal title in italics, volume, issue number, so this is issues one through four, it's a, you know, they uh, just did four issues in one. Here's the date, I'm gonna expand that abbreviation, spring 2013, colon, page numbers. So that's awesome. And then let's go back here and grab the name of the database. So this was the ATLA Religion Database with ATLA Serials Plus. So we will copy that name and paste that in right there. Whoa, let's just keep text on that. There we go. And always end your bibliography or citation with a period. And there we got our journal article. So now that we have a few entries, so we can go through here and uh, sort these into alphabetical order. So we'll use just select everything, use the uh, sort function in my word processor, and boom. So I've got a pretty good looking bibliography there. <coughs> so let me do uh, maybe one or two more. You go back into the ebook collection here. You find a commentary by Jerome. So author Jerome, title Matthew. There we go. I pull up that citation feature to get me started. Go 
grab that information and paste that into my bibliography. Okay, now, lots of weird stuff here. So number one, uh, two authors, but if we actually take a look at the item, so if we bring that up, what we see is that, okay, St. Jerome is the author, uh, Thomas P. Scheck is the translator, not the author. So um, citation features steering me wrong there. So that's one thing. And then, you know, this, the, this is the series title, which it includes down here, but, you know, it also tries to put it up here in the book title. So that's not right. Uh, otherwise, we look, yeah, mostly pretty good. So let's clean this up. So, okay, so this is a case. So we have an ebook which we've already done, and this has a translator. So let's check the Turabian guide. Scroll down here to the book section. And book with an editor or translator. So let's check that out. Here we go. So author, book title, and then translated by the translator name. And we finish out our citation there. Okay. Uh, but it's also a book in a series, which we saw before. Uh, so we can check this entry book with multiple additional elements to find out what is the correct order to put them in. Is it here author, title, translator, and or editor, and the order in which the book lists them, edition designation, volume number, and then the series title. And we have some examples down here where we have lots of things, translators, editors, series, multiple volumes. So we need to do the translator and then the series title is what we're gonna be doing. So let's clear this out here because we don't need that part of the title. And we're gonna take uh, Thomas there, remove him and stick him after here, so translated by Thomas Pischek. Clean up the author name here. Okay, the Fathers of the Church. So we saw here that this is volume 117 in this series. You can put that on there, you can put the uh, series number enumeration, and you just put that right after the title, no intervening punctuation. Uh, that's not really necessary, it's completely optional. Uh, you know, if it's a major series that's really well known, uh, that can sometimes be a good thing to put on. So let's clean up place of publication, Washington, DC, okay, so like University of America Press, that's good, date, and then we need the database name, which is just the same as this one up here. Same ebook collection, so we'll just add that on, and we've got our citation. So let's do one more. We'll do an article in an e-journal on the internet. So I'm gonna to go to the library homepage here and I'm gonna look up a journal in our journals list. It's a review and expositor. That moment to come up. There we go. And so we can access this from uh, directly from the publisher, Sage Online. Okay. 
I'm going to browse this journal and find something from August of 2014. Let's go down here. 2014. Uh, so 111, issue three. And looking for failure on the failures of naturalism. And this one right here. Okay. Well, so they give us a little uh, site button there. That could be handy. Let's see what that gives us. Choose our style. Uh, show Thoravians uh, derived from Chicago. So we'll use that. Let's copy that. And paste that in here. Let's do paste, keep text only. What happened? We lost our uh, hanging indent there, so we'll put that back on. And we might have to, yep, put our space after back on. <clears throat> okay, so we have um, another e journal article here. So we've got our author, journal title, quotation marks. Some title case, that's good. It's a review and expositor, so that needs to go in italics. Volume 111, number three, August 2014, in parentheses, colon, page range. So 259 to 273, so they kind of abbreviate that. You can go either way, either way is fine. So you can do it the full number or the abbreviated number. And then we have, uh, then they give the DOI for the article. Now, Turabian really wants that to be a true URL. So if we have the DOI, we just put HTTPS colon slash slash DOI dot ORG slash there. And we've got our uh, correct URL there. Okay, so there, that's some examples. And then of course, you know, we can, uh, looks like we got some extra line breaks in there. We will sort the bibliography again. There we go. And we have the beginnings of a biblio correctly formatted bibliography. So to restate the main points here, you know, consult our Turabian guide on our website to uh, see examples and to see, uh, you know, how to format your citations you know, in your bibliography. Remember to do those hanging indents like this. You know, do the spacing where there's a blank line between each entry. Alphabetize your entries. Correct those uh, place of publication states to postal abbreviations. And that's it. And if you have any questions about how to cite something correctly, do feel free to contact the library, send us an email, start a chat, uh, give us a call. Uh, we'll be glad to help you uh, format your bibliography.